So now the, we still have to construct this polynomial. So if we can construct a polynomial pi of t with um, so so with um, degree at most n minus one such that um, pi of j n i of okay so let me write this out then it'll be clear. So if we can construct pi of t. with degree at most n minus one. Such that Pi of J and j j and j of lambda j so bear with me i'm just uh, hypothesizing some things and then i'll show that this is something desirable for us and then i'll show how to construct these polynomials so this is equal to zero for every i not equal to j and when i equals j p i of j n i of lambda i equals b i then p of t which i will define as p1 of t plus etc plus p k of t k is the number of distinct eigenvalues of this matrix A. So if I consider P, P1 of T through PK of T, um, will uh, will fulfill the requirements of the theorem. Is the polynomial, or just say, the requirements of the theorem. What do I mean by that? I mean that if I consider um, P of J, this will turn out to be equal to B. Why? Because if I consider P of J, this is equal to P1 of J plus etc plus pk of j which is equal to p1 of now j is a matrix which is of this block, block diagonal form j1 through jk plus etc plus pk of j1 through jk And uh, a polynomial of a block diagonal form, you can apply the polynomial inside this block for each of these block diagonals, and that's exactly equal to the polynomial applied to the entire block diagonal form. What I mean is that this is equal to P1 of J1, PK of JK, plus etc., plus PK of j1 pk of jk okay this is in general not true you cannot apply you cannot push the polynomial inside each element of a matrix but for a block diagonal matrix you can push the polynomial into each of the blocks now we already said that p is a polynomial such that this is equal to b1 and all these other terms in this block diagonal form are equal to zero. And here all these things will be equal to zero. PK of JK will be BK. And so this is equal to P1 of J1, 
Actually, I should have said Jn1, but anyway, J1 up to all the other things are 0, plus etc. plus Here everything is zero except PK of JK. And this is equal to B1. And so all these are non-overlapping blocks. And so I'll get B1, BK on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. So which is equal to my matrix B. So basically if I can find these polynomials PI of T with degree at most N minus one, such that these two properties hold one p i of j and j of lambda j equals zero for all i not equal to j and p i of j and i of lambda i equals b i that is when i equals j then i'm all set so now we just need to figure out how to construct these polynomials so here it is q i of t is equal to the product from j equals 1 to k as a product except the i term of t minus lambda j power nj. Okay, then the degree of this polynomial QI of T equals what? It's the sum of all these NJs except the i term. Okay, that would be the degree of this polynomial. But the sum of all these NJs equals N because that's the sum of the sizes of all the Jordan blocks and that should be of size N. So this is equal to N minus N9. Okay, so now uh, one thing we can note immediately is that QI of j and j of lambda j. If I compute this, this is actually going to be equal to 0 for every i not equal to j. Why is that? It's because uh, this has this kind of form. So if I substitute j and j of lambda j, I'll get j and j of lambda j. So the j term so, the, uh, so this is a kind of bad notation because j is also the index of the summation here. But whatever this j is, for example, for a moment, think of it as L. So I'll just write it as L so that it is not confusing. J and L of lambda L equals zero for all i not equal to L. OK, and now uh, if I consider this thing, one of the terms here will be the, OK, I'm belaboring the point, but there is a lambda L term, J N L of lambda L minus lambda L times the identity matrix. And then I'm raising that to the power N L. But this difference is just going to be that nilpotent matrix of size N I cross N I raised to the power N L. Um, sorry, NL cross NL raised to the power NL and the nilpotent matrix, when you ra raise it to the power NL, you will get the all zero matrix. And so this is always equal to zero. J NL of lambda L minus lambda L times the identity matrix power NL is equal to zero. So one of the terms in this product will be equal to zero, which will make the whole product equal to zero. This is just the nil potent matrix of index NL. Okay, so now 
Now the so this satisfies one part of what I want. Q i of lambda j, uh, Q i of j n l of lambda l equals zero for i not equal to j. But I also need that Q i of j n i of lambda i should be equal to b i. I need that property also. But Q n i of j, uh, Q i of j n i of lambda i. Need not equal b i, but one thing we can say about it is that because the i equal to j or j equal to i term is not included here, um, it is the, the, the all its eigenvalues will necessarily be non-zero because these lambda j's are all distinct, so it is non-singular. And furthermore, um, if you examine this matrix, it will actually be, so each of these matrix uh, matrices, when I take J and I of lambda I minus lambda J, so when I substitute J and I of lambda I in here, one of these terms, that is the J term will be J and I, small J term will be J and I of lambda I minus lambda j times the identity matrix and this matrix will have non-zero entries on the diagonal and non-zero entries on the first super diagonal and it has been raised to the power nj and when you raise it to the power nj those super diagonal terms may get fully occupied but it will remain upper triangular and it will also retain this toplet structure that it has that is the diagonal entries are the same the first super diagonal entries are the same the second super diagonal entries are the same and so on so it is of the form star that is the and of the form that is it is upper triangular and tuplets. So basically the point is that um, uh, if I take an upper triangular toplets matrix, its inverse is upper triangular toplets, and the product of upper triangular toplets matrices is, all, is also upper triangular toplets. So here is you are seeing a product of such upper triangular toplets matrices, which will also remain upper triangular and toplets. And in fact, its inverse is also upper triangular and toplets. So we'll use that property next. Okay, so this implies that if I consider the matrix J, sorry, Q and I of J and I of lambda I inverse, this is also this times, if I multiply this by BI, BI is also upper triangular and toplets. So this is upper triangular and toplets. So now I'm pretty close. Um, so basically a matrix So, so, so basically, so what I'm trying to say is the following. So we have um, B i, I can write that as B one of i. This is the first diagonal entries in this matrix B i times 
j n i of lambda i minus lambda i times the identity matrix power 0 plus d 2 of i. This is the first super diagonal entry in the matrix b i times j n i of lambda i minus lambda i times the identity matrix power 1 plus and so on plus b n i of i times j n i of lambda i minus lambda i identity matrix power n i minus 1. So when I raise this to the power 1, this, this will have ones only on the first super diagonal entry. And those ones are getting multiplied by B2 of I. And so they're placing B2 of I in the first super diagonal entry of this BI. And similarly, when I raise it to the power NI minus one, I'll get a matrix which has zeros everywhere else, but a one at the top left entry. And that is getting multiplied by BNI of I, and then that is getting placed at the top right entry of this BI. So I can, I can always write it like this. So this implies that there exists. Now this itself is a polynomial of degree at most ni minus one. So there exists a polynomial degree at most ni minus one such that QI of so J N I of lambda I inverse times B I, which is an upper triangular toplitz matrix. This can be written as this particular polynomial that I've written here. A similar polynomial but using the entries of this matrix instead of b1i up to bnii some polynomial of degree at most ni minus 1 ri i'll call that of jni of lambda i so i have to do all this uh, circus because whatever i used earlier this q n ni of this thing this need not equal bi that I have to do some circus to make this to find another polynomial such that this property continues to hold but q n i of j n i of uh, lambda i will be equal to b i that is why i am doing all this uh, all these steps here so now i am I'm, I'm, I'm almost uh, done with the proof what i'll do is now set p i of t equal to q i of t which is what I defined earlier, this QI of T. Which is of degree at most. Sorry. N minus N. OK, so the degree. is at most n i minus one plus n minus n i n minus one okay so then this the the claim is basically that this um, if i did p i of j this is that that's all i need so this matrix satisfies n j of lambda j is equal to q i of j n j of lambda j times r i of j n j of lambda j and uh, this is equal to zero by our construction so zero times r i of j n j of lambda j 
which is equal to the all zero matrix for all i not equal to j and p i of j n i of lambda i is equal to q i of j n i of lambda i times r i of j n i of lambda i and r i of j n i of lambda i is this matrix here and q i of j n i of so so i get q i of j n i of lambda i times q i of j n i of lambda i inverse times b i so these two just cancel with each other and this is equal to b i which is all that we were looking for okay so um so what we just showed is that um if the matrix a is non derogatory then any other matrix b commutes with a if and only if there exists a polynomial p of degree at most n minus 1 such that b equals p of a of course if b equals uh, uh, p of a then a commutes with b that is trivial but showing the other way around was a little bit more involved we had to do quite a few steps to show that if a and b commute and a is non derogatory then there must exist a polynomial of degree at most n minus 1 such that b can be written as a polynomial of a in fact uh, the converse is also true uh, namely that um, um a in c to the n cross n is non derogatory if and only if every matrix that commutes with a can be written as a polynomial in a okay so um so that's all we have time for today um, i wanted to talk i wanted to also talk about convergent matrices and uh, their properties um so we've already seen that uh, a matrix a is convergent if all the elements of a power m go to zero as m goes to infinity and if the matrix a is diagonal it means that uh, it's convergent if and only if all the diagonal entries in magnitude are less than 1 which means that all the eigen values of this matrix a are less than 1 in magnitude and this uh, directly extends to diagonalizable matrices because a power m can be written as v lambda power m times v hermitian where v is the mate or v hermitian lambda power m times v where v is a matrix containing the eigen values of this matrix a uh, and so basically we have also seen this before that diagonalizable matrices are convergent if the magnitude of all the eigen values of the matrix are less than 1 now what we'll discuss the next time is the extension of this idea to non diagonalizable matrices also which of course we will do through the jordan canonical form so that's it for today and we'll continue next on continue in the next class thank you